All right, and let's take a look at one of these ads that Richard was talking about. Watch this. Unstable government policies have hurt people around the world. Big government, careless spending, and quick fixes have caused economies to collapse. But British Columbia is standing strong by controlling government spending, low taxes, and investing in skills training. British Columbia. Canada starts here. Learn what it means for you at bcjobsplan.ca. A message from the government of BC. All right, so there's lots to kick around in BC politics today, starting with that ad. And to help us, we're joined in the newsroom here in Ottawa by Emile Scheffel. He'll be working for Christy Clark to help her get reelected. And in our Vancouver studio, pleased to welcome Jeff Meggs, a Vancouver City Councillor who's backing Adrian Dix to be the next BC Premier. And uh, Jeff, let me start with you. I watched that ad and I go, well, what's wrong with that? It's the government trying to say that things are looking good there in BC. Well, I think it's part of a series of ads, uh, David, at $15 million worth of big, big buy here in B.C. by any standard, which say incorrectly that B.C. is leading the pack, when in fact I would say the current government's done as much as anybody else to create uncertainty and uh, big spending in the province. Like other places, we've been running a deficit, and unlike the ad claims, we're at about fourth in job creation, not first. Uh, they've actually cut spill, uh, skills training spending. So there are many, many problems with the ad, not least that it purports to show uh, BC as a beacon in the darkness when, in fact, uh, I think we've got lots of cleaning up to do. Uh, Emil, let me ask you, uh, this has become an issue now in British Columbia. Col British Columbians see these ads and they kind of go, well, what are you trying to do here? It's $15 million of my money. You're not telling me about a new service or a new program. You're just kind of boasting. Well, look, David, let's be frank. We got in a lot of trouble as a government under Premier Campbell with the HST fiasco. And the reason for that was government didn't bring the people along with its agenda. It didn't talk to the people, and it didn't consult enough. Government has learned from that mistake. That's what you're seeing here. People have jobs and families. They're busy, but you've got to reach them. You've got to let them know what government's doing for them and start a conversation with them. And that's exactly what we're seeing here with these ads. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, uh, let me switch topics a little bit because the other big news, I think, for B.C. politics just about an hour or so ago, uh, an MLA, John Slater, a B.C. liberal MLA, has said he's quitting that caucus. He's going to sit as an independent. Not sure if he's going to run again. Um, Jeff, is this a big deal for Christy Clark's caucus that he's, she's just lost an MLA? Well, I think it's always helpful to have an incumbent running in a riding that you'd like to win again. He won it by about 800 votes last time. There's a lot of confusion, really, about what exactly happened in the Slater case because he seems to have been on again and off again about his own intentions and now the party has said he's got personal reasons which have not been disclosed at least they hadn't when i came to the studio and maybe they won't be maybe it's nobody's business but uh, certainly another seat where an incumbent's gone and in a bit of a huff to sit as an independent and uh, open that one up for someone else and, and emil you may not have heard but we're just seeing tweets now from zach Podorica, who is the riding association president for john slater he's quit he's blaming the party says this is not the way it should be done um, i'm assuming a party doesn't want this sort of uh, dirty laundry air just with you know 16 weeks to an election well let's be clear John Slater is a good man with a long record of public service that ought to be appreciated but the fact is as you get up to an election there has to be a time for renewal of the candidate slate and you've got to have some fresh faces coming forward I think that's something you're gonna see very shortly in boundary Similkameen with our free enterprise alliance and it's unfortunate that things have shaken out this way with John shouldn't it be up to the local riding association though to decide who's gonna be on the ballot and not some party honcho at headquarters I think there's got to be a back and forth between the party and the, uh, the local members. I think that's been taking place over a few months. As Jeff pointed out, rightly, uh, John unfortunately seems to have changed his mind a couple of times. So I think what's going on on the ground isn't entirely clear. I'm hesitant to weigh into it too much. But I think you're going to see a great new candidate coming forward for the Free Enterprise Alliance. And it's going to be a heck of a race in Boundary Similkameen no matter what. Um, well, Amelia, we, are we running as the Free Enterprise Alliance on your side or as the BC Liberals? I mean, I think you've indicated head office forced out Slater, and I think you also said earlier that it was the Liberal Party which is trying to get its message out in this pre-election period, which is precisely the problem with the ads. If there's an informational component to the ads, I can't find it. It shows dominoes toppling and darkness closing in on BC. You know, that is not an informational message, and the previous round had the Premier herself in it. So, you know, I think it's clearly uh, all hands on deck for this election, which is very uh, difficult one for the Liberals to be facing down right now. 
Well, Jeff, I'm sorry that you and your party are uh, stuck in the age of the carrier pigeon and the stagecoach, but unfortunately it is 2013 and uh, we have to reach voters where they are. That's sometimes at home in the evening on their TV sets and through the website that was advertised there and the conversation that's going on there through probably the biggest consultation of the citizens that a BC government has ever undertaken. That's the kind of thing that Premier Clark was elected to do and she's just keeping her promises. No, but truth is a timeless value. It goes all the way back to the stagecoach and so there's false statements in the ads, there's errors in the ads, and they are of a very partisan and, and uh, directional nature rather than informational. And I think that's what Adrian Dix is saying, is that there should be a really clear standard. I think it is appropriate to do proper informational ads by government from time to time, but $15 million strictly of this sort in the run-up to the election is not proper. There well, are some, let me just jump in with this idea, Emil, because this is something I think that Adrian Dix has, has floated, but it is something done in other provinces where if the government wants to run advertising, it's got to run those ads first by a third party, uh, an independent sort of commissioner of advertising within the government to say, is this partisan or not? Would that be a solution, do you think? Well, that's certainly an interesting idea. Obviously, we have a disagreement here. We'll have to leave it up to the voters to make that decision. They're going to have to choose between Premier Clark's very clear agenda and a proven record and Adrian Dix's still hidden plan, which I'm hoping we'll see one of these days soon. Well, no, but the, good, the, the Liberals should not be spending taxpayers' dollars in government f spending on a partisan campaign. And Emil's very clear this is a partisan campaign. I didn't uh, say know, that, that is the There's problem nothing with partisan it. no, but, about it. It's about talking no, to but, people. Uh, well, no, I think the, your whole message today has been that this is getting out the government's plan, making sure we're concerned consulting and that they're going to have to make a choice in the election. And this a is government precisely that was the elected, most Jeff, that has a responsibility to speak to the citizens and to have a dialogue with them. Well, I don't think that the government gets to spend taxpayers' dollars to get a partisan message out, and that's the core of Adrian Dix's complaint. Let me suggest another campaign. I just, we'll watch this segue. You'll, watch, you'll be impressed by this. Here's a government ad that we might want to see from B.C. saying that your health information is okay uh, in B.C. Because another big news item today is the B.C. Ministry of Health has compromised or has admitted that some health data of, in, of individuals has been uh, inappropriately authorized. This is an issue that goes to, I guess it goes to uh, competence, ability to run a government. Uh, Jeff, let me ask you first, is, is this going to be a big deal going forward? in a campaign? Well, I think it goes to this theme of a, of a government in trouble, unable to manage many files and in a lot of difficulty. You know, I mean, the, the controversy this week as well about the purchase of TransLink's new CBUS in a, Singapore, uh, in a Singapore shipyard, you know, when a BC yard was a good bidder is, is indicative of the kind of difficulties they have generating jobs here in the province, even with spending that's being done by TransLink, which is basically a, uh, an arm of the provincial government in many respects. So, you know, I think that these, these issues of competence and management are turning into a bugbear for the, uh, for the administration. And they're frankly drowning out to a large degree the message they're hoping to communicate on a partisan basis with the jobs ads. And, and Emil, the government does say that this, there is a minimal, quote, minimal, if any, risk of inappropriate use of personal information uh, in this particular case. But still, I, I, let me ask you, is, you know, these things happen. Uh, can, can the government message properly on this kind of issue? Well, you're right, David. These things do happen in a bureaucracy. It's inevitable that mistakes are sometimes going to be made. Government's job is to try to minimize those mistakes and to learn from them when they happen. So I think uh, you can expect in the next few days to see an action plan from the government to address this problem. And I certainly think it's something that uh, decisive steps are going to be taken to make sure it doesn't happen again. Um, I'd like to keep going all night, guys. Emil Scheffel uh, supporting Christy Clark and Jeff Meg supporting Andrew Dix. Thank you so much, guys. Hope you have the program again. It's a pleasure. Thank Thanks, you, David. David.